we have looked at a number of instruments for environmental policy already, and uh, now it's a turn for the so-called market-based or incentive-conform uh, policy instruments. Uh, this is where we are in the sequence, uh, and I'm first going to talk about uh, taxes and going to accentify issues with the plastic bag levy. Um, <coughs> Environmental tax is essentially a tax on uh, emissions. You pay a charge or a levy or a penalty or a fee for every unit uh, emitted. And sometimes you can't charge uh, for emissions directly. So the tax falls instead of every unit produced uh, or every unit uh, consumed. And it depends on legal things and uh, political things, whether you call this an environmental tax or a charge or a levy or a penalty or a fee or whatever. Uh, it just depends on what it is technically within the legal system uh, of that particular country. Uh, and of course, it also depends on the political climate. In some countries, you cannot say the T word, but you can say um, penalty or levy. Uh, so that is what it is. You pay a price for every unit uh, emitted. Uh, and this affects uh, the analysis as follows. What you're looking at here is uh, the cost-benefit diagram that we've seen uh, before with emissions on the uh, horizontal axis and some notion uh, of costs and benefits on the vertical axis. Um, and then uh, what we had was that this is the marginal private gains from emissions and unregulated emissions would be Q prime because that is the point where you do not want to emit more. Um, if this is about energy use at a certain point, uh, you stop heating your home because it is warm enough um, and heating your home actually costs money. Uh, or if this is about driving your car, at a certain point you stop driving your car uh, because you've reached your destination, uh, and driving isn't a whole lot of fun. Um, or if this is about fertilizer application, at a certain point you stop putting more fertilizers on your crops because fertilizers cost money and your crops already look happy and healthy. Uh, so there is just a limit in the amount of pollution that you generate because it is, after all, an externality. You don't want to maximize pollution, you want to maximize. Um, your profits or your utility. Uh, so <clears throat> at some point you stop uh, doing more uh, of the stuff. Uh, and then of course if you push down emissions that is going to cost money because you push it down the optimal amount. Um, you now what happens if you install a tax? Essentially you make it more expensive. You increase the price of the in polluting uh, activity, uh, and that means that you push down the mar margin of private gains curve from the dark brown line to the light brown line, and that means that your the uh, emissions that you choose move from Q prime to Q double prime. That is what an environmental tax does. <coughs> um, there is a particular environmental tax that is called the Pigou tax, and the Pigou tax pushes emissions down to the optimal level. And the optimal level is where the marginal cost of emission reduction equal the marginal benefits of emission reduction, or the marginal losses from emissions. That's the same thing. Uh, that is this particular point here. And if you impose a tax that is exactly equal to the green line at this point, then you push down uh, emissions to the optimal amount Q star. There is a particular environmental tax called the Pigou tax, the one that exactly internalizes uh, the externality. But uh, most environmental taxes, the legislator uh, or the regulator does not know exactly what the marginal social costs uh, are from emissions, and a tax is imposed, an environmental tax rather than the Pigou tax. Um, so that is how taxes uh, work. Um, I'll come back to some of the characteristics uh, of taxes when I start comparing them to subsidies and tradable permits uh, and to direct regulation. 
Uh, but let's look at a particular uh, tax, the plastic tag levy in Ireland, uh, that was dubbed the most popular tax in Europe for reasons that we'll come back, that I will come back to later. Um, Ireland introduced a uh, plastic bag levy in the year 2002. Note this is a levy, not a tax. Um, and it did so against uh, the will of the people. Uh, what you're looking at here in table one is uh, an ex ante willingness to pay study of how much people would be prepared to pay for uh, getting a plastic or uh, buying a plastic bag in uh, the supermarket. And the majority or a large minority of people did not want to pay anything. Um, and then another, uh, what is it, 52% um, were prepared to pay actually very uh, little, uh, a few uh, pennies uh, per uh, bag. And only 6% uh, or only 8% of uh, people were prepared to pay uh, 6p or more. So this was very unpopular. People did not want this. Uh, for political reasons, the uh, government pushed it through nonetheless, and they did not charge uh, 6p, but they actually charged uh, twice uh, that. So this was not something that the people uh, wanted. Um, <clears throat> the government nonetheless did it, as I said, for political reasons. Um, this was from the exchequer's point of view, actually, a good deal. The annual revenue of the tax uh, amounts to around 13 million uh, per year. Uh, the fixed cost of running this tax was only 1.2 uh, million. Essentially, new computer systems to uh, administer the whole thing. Uh, there was an awareness campaign at the same time. That's another sort of one-off, uh, 360,000 uh, euros. Uh, and then the variable cost of operating the system uh, was free, is 350,000 uh, per year. And this is the civil servants that essentially uh, <coughs> monitor the system and write the annual reports and so on and so forth. Uh, the reason that, and, and of course also, um, oh, this is uh, the, the cost to the exchequer. Um, so this is the civil servants keeping an eye on the system. Uh, the reason that the costs uh, are so low for a tax that uh, covers an entire country and a lot of supermarkets and a lot of other shops um, is because the levy is essentially another excise. Um, and in Ireland and in most other countries, there are already existing systems to collect excises and uh, value added tax VAT. And essentially, you just needed to tweak these systems to uh, introduce uh, this particular uh, plastic bag levy. And that is an important thing to keep in mind that once you introduce a new regulation, a new tax in this case, if it's entirely new, then you actually need to set up a large machinery to do it. Uh, but if you make it so that it can piggyback on an existing system, it is actually fairly cheap uh, to do so. And from the exchequer's point of view, this is a good deal because in the first year they already made uh, 11 million uh, euros, right? And then after that, they made um, um, almost 30 million euros uh, per year. Um, so, a good thing from the exchequer's point of view. Um, <clears throat> also a good thing uh, from the environment point of view. Uh, if you look uh, at litter uh, in the country, then before the plastic bag levy, a lot of plastic bags flying around. Uh, after that, areas with no plastic litter uh, increased by 21%, and areas with little litter uh, increased by uh, 56%. So from an environmental perspective, this is uh, good. Um, most plastic acts actually end up not somewhere flying around the environment, um, but actually uh, ends up in um, uh, landfills and those sort of things uh, and in incineration. Uh, the, the amount of plastic in household waste uh, <coughs> fell from 5% to 0.2%, so there's a sharp reduction uh, in, uh, in plastic use. 
Um, and the retailers uh, were largely positive. Um, they actually saved money because instead of giving away uh, plastic bags as they used to do, uh, they now give away paper bags, and the costs are roughly uh, similar. Uh, but importantly, from their perspective, from a retailer perspective, a lot of people brought their own bags or bought durable bags, which uh, actually profit margin is uh, larger, but not giving away plastic bags anymore, uh, actually saved them uh, a substantial amount of money. And um, even though the public did not like it beforehand, after the fact, table three here actually shows that most people either were neutral uh, in terms of the impact at checkout, people were worried that it would take longer, that's not the case, most people were uh, positive in terms of convenience, <coughs> more people liked it than didn't, and, and most people were actually indifferent, uh, same is true for the expense, uh, and people were particularly happy about the environmental impact. So, did not like it beforehand, they did not like the idea of a plastic bag levy, but once it was introduced, they actually uh, took to it. Um, for this reason, um, <coughs> it is seen as a popular, uh, uh, a, a popular uh, regulation, um, and it is the most popular tax in Europe, uh, the most popular tax in the world, because essentially a lot of countries follow the example uh, of uh, Ireland. This is a bit unfortunate because Denmark was actually first to introduce a plastic bag levy, but Ireland was just much more, um, uh, much better at promoting uh, and touting the plastic bag levy abroad. Uh, so Ireland was seen as the leading uh, country. In this. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of countries followed, not just in Europe, but also across the world, uh, in India, for instance, uh, South Africa. Um, Wales has a plastic bag levy uh, since 2010. Also, very positive uh, effects there. Um, plastic bag, yes, plastic bag use fell by 71% uh, for single use bags and 57% overall because you see some uh, substitutions for plastic bags that are multiple use. Um, there's a difference uh, in the regulation that you see across uh, the UK. Uh, and Ireland, and that is that in uh, Ireland, the tax is paid to the exchequer, uh, whereas in Wales and Scotland and England, a little bit later, the tax is actually kept by uh, the supermarkets, and they are supposed to donate it to uh, good causes. Um, the uh, the problem with this is that it's a bit unclear how this is monitored and enforced. In the first year, when a lot of journalists were paying attention, uh, the uh, <coughs> supermarkets donated a lot of money to good causes. It's unclear whether they donated all the money and how much they kept for themselves. Um, but of course, as time goes on, people lose interest in this and you would expect uh, supermarkets. Uh, to keep more and more money uh, for themselves. And of course, they're justified in doing so by saying, oh, this is all costing money. Um, so it's a bit unclear uh, how this is uh, really going in the United Kingdom. But in terms of the use of plastic bags, that has definitely uh, dropped, not just in uh, Wales, but also in Scotland uh, and England. And the reason that this is so powerful uh, that you see these very sharp drops in the use of plastic bags is because you give a price signal, so that is important, uh, but there is a cheap alternative in the form of reusable bags and paper bags. Uh, and if there is a almost as good alternative at the same price, then if you increase the price of the offending good by only a little bit, then people switch very rapidly. And so the substitution elasticities are very high, and that makes that the environmental impact is so very large of what is essentially a very small uh, environmental tax. If substitution elasticities are low, 
if there's no viable alternative uh, to the environmentally offending good or service, then of course you would see a much smaller response uh, to a small tax.